however dim our hopes. Inbound, four o'clock low. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. Christy, Matt, Alonzo, and Ben were talking about Unbroken, which Angelina Jolie directed. It's only her second film. It is a very old-fashioned war drama. Please tell us about it, Ben Mankiewicz. Yeah, this is the uh, true story, and it seems uh, really true in the way, unlike the way that movies generally do true stories, <laughs> which is, you know, not true. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, Jack O'Connell plays uh, Louis Zamperini, who, a bombardier in World War II who's uh, uh, captured by the Japanese after a particularly difficult ordeal prior to his capture. Uh, and the brutal treatment that he suffers at the hands of his Japanese captors, specifically one captor setting up kind of a mano a mano story. Um, and uh, uh, he is, uh, during the course of this captivity, brutalized, but as you might imagine, he is unbroken. Louis, a moment of pain is worth a lifetime of glory. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! I got good news and bad news. Who is the Olympic athlete? Don't look at me. Hello, mother, father. This is your Louis talking. I am now interned in a Tokyo prisoner of war camp. I can't say this. What it says about America, it's not true. This man must be taught respect. Each prisoner will teach him this lesson. He used to think that I could do anything, that I was better than I am. Who says you're not? If you get me through this, I swear I'll dedicate my whole life to you. If I can take it, I can make it. Stay down. If he drops it, shoot him. So I. Uh, you know, I, I liked this. Um, I thought it lacked some suspense. That that for a movie that seemed that it would potentially be well, filled with drama, that it wasn't quite enough of it there while still being a compelling story. Well, we talked about this when we talked about Rosewater. When you're telling a true story, and, and, and you know the fact that we know this guy didn't die until 2014 because it was in the news and there's been a book about him and all, then it's a, the filmmaker has to sort of do other things to kind of keep you engaged in the story and, and, and maybe interested in how certain details work themselves out because we know the big ending, which is that he lives and he survives and he tells the story. And this movie doesn't quite pull that off, but I mean, it's, it's a, it, 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 you know, they, they, you know, when you study theater, they talk about the well-made play. This is very much the well-made film. Like, you know, yeah. Roger Deakin shot it, and it's beautifully scored by, was it Alexander Desplat, mm -hmm. I think? Um, you know, this amazing crew of screenwriters credited. You've got the Coen brothers yeah. and Richard Legravenez and William Nicholson, which I, it seems really weird. Usually when there's that many people on a script, it's, you know, right. four sort of hacks. I think the Coens took a last pass at it. Okay, yeah. That's I, I, why I, they have any kind of credit, but you will not see a trace of Coen Zenus in here. No, 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 no. It's, no. Very, it's, very it's safe. super old fashioned. I mean, it's the kind of movie that Clint Eastwood could have directed, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm wondering if she was taking notes during uh, uh, a changeling, because it, it very much has that kind of sturdy, you know, solid, but you, nothing super exciting. You about haven't it. seen it yet at the time of this, but, you know, I saw the, it, this back to back with, with American Sniper. With American Sniper, and there's a. They're very similar. There's, there's a, a sameness to the manner in which yeah. they're presented. No, and both presented well, No, I think. Yeah, well. I admire this more than I like it. It never really sure, grabbed me. I think I'm, I'm with you in that I kept waiting for it to grab me. But again, like, it's shot beautifully. Like, my great hero, Roger Deakins, takes these moments that it, he infuses them with great darkness and menace. Like, And he does that through a lot of, the, of his best work. I'm thinking about the, um, the scene toward the end where they're all standing up on the roof and there are explosions in the distance and it's at night. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of some of his work in Jarhead, which is like that really hellish, dark, nighttime imagery. 
Um, it reminded me of the train heist in Assassination of, of Jesse James. Like he does a lot with negative space and with shadow and with darkness. And but the, the bright sequences too, like when they're on when they're on the well, life raft for weeks and weeks, that, and they're also really and when harrowing. they're on the plane in the in the very beginning when mm -hmm. they're doing their, their bombing missions, and it's yeah, so it's stuff, really beautiful and really great. well made. Really yeah. great. Um, and there is some there is some tension in those initial bombing sequences. I mean, yeah, there is. There's yeah. great no, there's great tension, yes, in the beginning, but that involves other people who you don't know whether they will live, right? right. You know? Definitely, yeah. Uh, so that, and and, and, the, and you, you you realize how thin the metal is on those planes. Yeah, totally. Those right. bullets are just cutting through like butter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's just there's a, you know, there's a there's a there's a real standoff at the end between his Japanese captor and him where he is really unbroken, <laughs> you know, and I just that moment sort of capped off what I'd been leaning to, where you're like, all right. Mm -hmm. Like, it just didn't seem, it didn't It's really on the it, nose. It did, right, mm -hmm. it, did, it was really on the nose and it sort of failed to deliver uh, emotionally. It's that's the, the moment the, on the poster. That's the, the right, that's the, that's the downside to it. The, the upside to it is, is that it's a very, it's a compelling story, well acted, well directed, well told, and uh, it, it just, it, it, like you say, you admire, you, yeah. you, you think for moments, wow, I'm looking at greatness, and then at the end, you're yeah. just looking at It's a at good goodness. movie, it's hard to get excited. And right. Jack O'Connell, for all that he's asked to do physically, and for the, the giant gaps in time that he is required to, to represent, there's sort of a sameness to his demeanor. Like, no matter what happens, he is unbroken, right? <laughs> like, there is no complexity to his character, he's just, he's valiant. He, and he, he's me, brave, just, yeah. and he's good and true. There was and just that's one moment where, where he even weakened. So, like, I, I just, the, you know, where he sort of loses his balance <laughs> after he faints. Um, and, but I, I thought there'd be more of, oh, man, it's, like, because we know he's unbroken, like, we didn't even get him close to broken. He's not even you know? dented. Right. He, he's, <laughs> well, he's, he's so stoic. Right? Right. Right. Yeah, you right. know, the difference with this in American Sniper is that I felt like Bradley Cooper does a good job of yeah. showing the turmoil, and we'll get into that later, but the, the turmoil that Chris Kyle goes through, or at least you believe that in the way that movie represents that character, and, and you don't see that here. The other thing, and you know, now it's my turn to Grinch this one down, like I've done with every other movie <laughs> I've been doing. Um, I felt like this, I, this movie skips over the most interesting part of his story. To me, the most interesting part of Zamperini's story is, in, is what they cover in the title cards at mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. All of the stuff about him getting past his experiences and making peace the with forgiving. it and, and the forgiving, that's the stuff that you never get to see. And that's the part that I, I think, that's the unbroken part. That's the part you want to see. Like That's where you want to see him put his life back together. And the movie kind of skips past all that. And that's, I was really disappointed in that. And yeah. you know, from the standpoint, I mean, I felt like this movie didn't do a lot that you know you haven't seen in, say, for instance, something like Castaway or something like Stalag Seventeen. You know, we've seen different movies cover a lot of this ground, and that's not to, to say you can't cover it again. But you know, the lack of emotional involvement is a problem here, and with a character that is presented that stoically and kind of that same level of tension the whole time. I didn't really care all that yeah, much he, because he needed to almost break more. There's just no right. question that we needed to sort of, or to see what compromises he made to not break, you right? Know, or and maybe or he you made none. See him, or if you tell that part of the story, then at least he goes from like he's not only physically strong, but he has this sort of like morality and ethics that allows him to forgive his tormentors. And like he, it, yeah. there's more to him than just like the physicality of I can take all this crap. He didn't even talk. He's, they didn't, there aren't even conversations with other prisoners where he right. tells them to. Buck up. Buck up, right. There's not, I mean, you know, that all sounds super cliched when I say it, but that, but there was some, there's, I mean, we all agree, there, there's something missing to keep what is a really nice looking, well made film from being one that, that we're going to remember it is for great. a long time. Yeah. Donald, I should mention Donald Gleason, son of. Uh, Brendan, Brendan Gleason. is his. Uh, Jackie Gleason? He's, he, he's really good at it. He's, he's good, yeah. And, 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 really, and really good American accent. He, he was in like Frank and About Time, but but this is the first time he's played an American. And and goodness. and Jai Courtney, who I still keep waiting for them to find a good role for him. He has a, some nice moments here too. He's the co-pilot. Yes. So what are our numbers, please? What did I say? You said seven point seven. Thank you. Is, oh, I said seven, I believe. You said six point seven. I said six point seven. That seemed that. <laughs> I said six point five, and yeah. Matt is the low one five. again today with a five. So our average is six point five. But where is it? Uh. 50%. 50%. So I'm right this time. 
It's <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those ones where, you know, the fresh rotten paradigm, it's kind of like, I liked it enough to make it fresh, but it's it's a, not a, 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 it's, it's Alex, a flawed film. In flashbacks, because uh, uh, Zamperini's a runner, and the flashbacks where uh, Alex Russell plays his brother, I thought those were nice scenes. Mm. Like, uh, the, the stuff sort of setting up how he sort of developed this this, Four to this two. Still, right, yeah. right, right. Yes. This, uh, I, I like. Is this I like the, the one more thing moment we were supposed to? This is the one more thing moment. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>